We've had several people asking about a few different holdings of ours, especially since the last tech downturn. Some of these stocks have been absolutely crushed, especially if they're still in growth posture and not profitable yet. We will try to tackle a brief update on several of those companies. This video is long overdue. I'm Chase, and you've landed on the Moonshot Money Channel. Are you ready? Let's go. Woo! As always, this is not investing or financial advice. Please do your own due diligence. The first update is Ginkgo Bioworks, ticker DNA. Ginkgo reported their Q4 2021 numbers, and what do you know? Their revenue was much better than analysts expected. However, there was still a big net loss, more than expected. Their Q4 revenue was $148 million, which was a whopping 363% year-over-year increase. You've got to like that but the cost of growth is very large. Ginkgo is forecasting revenue of $340 million on the top side for 2022, which will still create a loss. The question for investors is this, are you willing to stay with the company or buy more and wait on future profits? For us, we're going to wait. If we got out now, we would take a 60% loss. This company has just been taken to the woodshed by Wall Street. We still believe in what they're doing. We just got in too early based on recent price punishment. We have been adding just a little bit here and there over the last few weeks, under $3.75 per share. Next is SoFi, a great company with a great CEO. The Super Bowl was played in the stadium with the name SoFi plastered all over it. The result, stock prices drop. Q4 numbers were reported on March 1st, showing a 54% adjusted earnings growth year over year, and the addition of 525,000 new members. Pretty good. SoFi's losses were lower than expected, and 2022 looks to continue the momentum. The appetite for risk has been terrible this year, so investors are just unloading these high growth companies. We are currently down 40% in our SoFi holdings, but we are holding. We believed in what SoFi was doing at $15 per share, and our conviction has not changed. We have been adding just a little here and there. SoFi received regulatory approval to become a bank holding company and acquired Goldman Pacific Bank. These successes will allow them to offer better lending products and make better margin. We still like it. Next is Virgin Galactic, ticker SPCE. Man, we feel like we've been to orbit and back with this space tourism investment. We felt the anti-gravity leading up to Richard Branson's flight to space with the price over $50 a share. We were up over 350%. Space is awesome. Then we felt the force of gravity begin to pull us back down. Unfortunately, we rode space all the way back down under $7. It felt like a full-blown crash. Well, it actually was. How long will it be until Virgin Galactic becomes a profitable space tourism company? Heaven only knows. They intend to start taking paying customers to space later this year, but positive cash flow isn't forecasted until 2026. Yikes. The only silver lining is part of the delay will be building out the fleet of the spacecraft. To be honest with everyone, we will probably get out of this one if we ever see a big spike up again. We should have sold about the time Richard Branson headed back to Earth. Next is QSI, or Quantum SI. At $4.75 per share, this is a long way from its 2021 high of over $20. This is another one of the SPACs that have struggled mightily over the last year. QSI uses a specialized semiconductor chip to do next generation protein sequencing, which will speed drug discovery, production, and treatment on many serious diseases. The thesis is tremendous here, and we are still very excited about what they're doing. Just do some research on Deep Mind and how that artificial intelligence solved protein folding and you'll hang on for the future. The big, big things are coming here. This year, QSI plans to fully commercialize its systems to customers. Hopefully we will begin to see some sales increasing in quarter two. We were down over 50% with this investment, but we really believe in the potential right here. Sequencing proteins will be a huge blessing to humanity. We liked it at $10.50 a share, and we like it at $4.75. We are very early in this investment and wish we had waited. Hindsight's always 2020. The lesson we've learned the past several months is this. Great new ideas are usually early, very early, and we have plenty of time. 
As the excitement fades, so normally does the stock price. Other companies from past videos that we're still holding through these downstorms are Open Door, Butterfly Network, Rocket Lab, and Pacific Biosciences. These stories are very similar. Great ideas and opportunities that are not profitable yet and the risk appetite from investors is just not there, causing the price to plummet. This hasn't been a very exciting video to say the least, but all is not lost. We are excited about three stock splits that are coming up, Google, Amazon, and Tesla. We have also been taking advantage of some steep discounts in great companies like UPS, Facebook or Meta, FedEx, Home Depot, JP Morgan, Netflix, C Limited, and Shopify. God willing, I've got many years to watch my portfolio compound, so I'm never worried about daily or weekly portfolio drops. I try to take advantage of situations and add more when I can. You take a great company like Home Depot. It's very close to its 52-week low. We've been buying a little. We are not financial advisors and we're not telling you what to do. We're just sharing our journey. What have you been buying lately? Are you taking advantage of some of these upcoming stock splits? Have you been buying any of the dips from these great companies that have been crushed? Buying low is harder to do than it seems. This is what separates good investors from those that struggle. Buying low is like buying something that's broken, messed up, or sick. It goes against your intuition, but you've got to have the strength to buy, knowing the company is still solid. That's where money is multiplied. It just needs some time. Our largest holding is still Tesla and we couldn't be more excited to be shareholders. You need to check out this video right here about their new agreement. Lately, we've been buying a monster Tesla supplier of raw materials. Watch this video to find out more. I'll see you over there.